Good afternoon. I have the distinction of being the uh, final speaker for the afternoon, so I'll try and not keep you uh, uh, too long. Uh, this is the uh, no disclosures, uh, really, uh, for me. Uh, that was a very nice introduction, and, and the previous speakers, I'm going to try and tie together a few things about uh, uh, vitamin D and some of the other things that were talked about earlier. Um, but I found that uh, we haven't really had any presentations here at A4M about uh, vitamin D binding protein and some of the effects uh, that the vitamin D binding protein has. So, if, so uh, the description in the uh, manual talk says that I'm going to talk more about vitamin D and its catholicidin or LL37 role. Uh, that's actually, I'm not going to be talking specifically about that. I'm going to be building beyond that because I thought that you would be get, getting that from other lecturers. So what I am going to be talking about is this thing called uh, group-specific macrophage activating factor as a way to restore immune system in patients that have immunodeficiencies, uh, particularly uh, cancer. Uh, so vitamin D binding protein. So we're going to talk about that. So what I'm going to do is outline the importance of vitamin D binding protein. And I'm going to present to you some of the problems that occur with vitamin D binding protein. And then I'm going to uh, show you some of the research and uh, the resolution of that. Um, I, I do uh, now, since uh, preparing this presentation, I do have a role uh, in the uh, cl immunology clinic uh, uh, working with some research in this area. But I won't be presenting my own data uh, today. So I'm going to do a re review of the uh, medical literature, actually. So vitamin D binding protein. So everyone knows about vitamin D, but like all hormones, uh, there's a binding protein. And it turns out that vitamin D is no different than any other hormone. It has a binding protein. And early on in the literature, it was known as a GC protein. And uh, some, some doctors, scientists that were working with, uh, with it were calling it vitamin D binding protein because they noticed this protein that bound to vitamin D. Uh, but they're, they're one and of the same. So what exactly is vitamin D binding protein? Well, it's, it's a fairly large uh, protein molecule. Uh, it's produced in the, mainly in the liver. But most of the vitamin D, binding, uh, vitamin D binding protein in our body, it has isoforms, but it has these uh, glycan links. You know, proteins fold in different ways, and the way that it folds depends on how it's glycosylated. And these foldings uh, turn out to be pretty important uh, when we look at the immune system. But first, let's look a little bit more about vitamin D. You'll notice that all, each, each of the studies, um, go back, I did, uh, have the, uh, the reference on the bottom. The, uh, so, so it's made in the liver, like I said, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's dependent on, on uh, calcium uh, dependent interactions. So we know that uh, uh, you know, vitamin, uh, vitamin D uh, can uh, possibly upregulate the production of uh, vitamin D binding protein, just like in any other hormonal system. Uh, but any damage to the liver uh, is going to cause problems with vitamin D binding protein. So we're going to just, for, before we get to that point, we're going to know well, what exactly does vitamin D binding protein do. Well, I can't get the pointer to work, but the vitamin D binding protein uh, uh, binds circulating 25-hydroxy vitamin D for transport and storage. That's where it's named from. But it also is a, the most important scavenger of extracellular G-actin. And uh, Dr. Eisenstein mentioned earlier in his talk about vitamin D uh, having to do with the organization, the intracellular uh, uh, milieu around uh, cancers and reorganizing those cancer cells. But the, the G-actin, the, the, the microfilament structure of our, our cells uh, Vitamin D does have roles in, in regulating the genes, we know that, but the vitamin D binding protein is very important in this, in this uh, keeping a normal structure of our extracellular G-actin. Right, what else does it do? Well, it also uh, enhances the chemotactic activity of neutrophils and inflammation, and it also activates uh, macrophages through a, uh, a GI, GAINAC modified GC protein. So what else can it do? Well, when we, there's a group of researchers, uh, uh, surgeons uh, in Scandinavia that were looking at uh, uh, vitamin D binding protein or GC protein and it's non-glycosylated non form, the form that uh, is found in the most abundant form in the body. 
and they were using this. They were looking at it, and they found that it correlated very much low levels of this GC protein correlated with multiple organ failure and non-survival in liver failure patients. And this was a, they were, they were liver transplant surgeons, actually, and they did a whole series of, uh, of, of, of tests looking at this. Um, but uh, they, and they found that it, it actually correlates, uh, I think there's a slide missing, with uh, uh, as, as good as the King's College criteria for um, predicting survivability of li liver transplant. If you can measure the GC protein, patients who have a low GC protein are going to have uh, uh, poor survivability. But you can take an intervention, which they did in some of their studies, which may come up later. Uh, giving the GC protein improves their survivability in these patients in a liver failure. Um, so, you know, so what is the relationship of vitamin D activity to, to, to vitamin D binding protein? Well, there's no, there's, there's, you know, vitamin D binding protein has a limited impact on the, the level of active vitamin D in the body. It's mainly binding the, its stored form, the 25-hydroxy vitamin D. So, because uh, one of the concerns would be, okay, well, if we, if we start giving patients uh, this vitamin D binding protein, are we going to mop up all of their vitamin D and then induce some sort of symptoms of, uh, of low vitamin D, which can happen with other hormones that we talked about, thyroid earlier, with the situation that can happen uh, with that. Um, but it doesn't appear. And there's, there's limited studies, but there, there are some studies that show that uh, it does not appear to affect the active uh, levels of vitamin D. So you can give it safely, not being concerned that you're going to somehow um, cause uh, you know, hypovitamin D levels in an otherwise normal vitamin D uh, person. So does vitamin D binding protein increase with vitamin D synthesis in, in consumption? Well, there, there haven't been as many studies. So this is looking at it from the other way around. Well, what can we do to increase this vitamin D binding protein if it has such an important role in the body? There are some studies that suggest that vitamin D uh, and, and vitamin A have an influence uh, on the transcriptional activity, uh, including the proteins uh, actin and myosin. So there's no direct studies. This is yet to be, they, they need to, to look at this, but you know, taking vitamin D, it would, you would supplementation, you'd think that, the, um, the, that someone would have published a study. We have an in-house study that we've done where we demonstrate that that does, the G, natural G, GC protein does go up when you supplement with vitamin D. It just seems so obvious, but strangely enough, I couldn't find any uh, references in the literature to, to demonstrate that.